upgrade. So the key thing now is to get something to match up in mid, unless they flex the Doom mid, which is also a possibility, where in that case, just get something team fighty on the off lane for Mizu. Fair enough. A couple ban outs to come. Do you see the, uh, the Spectre being removed here for GXR? Team D, they'll get rid of the Darkseer. Fair enough. It's one of Mizu's favorites in that off lane. And it does seem like they are going to just focus in on those off lane pickups now for Mizu. I gotta give a shout out as well to, to Mizu. Big thank you to Mizu for changing his name. See, for anyone that's not aware, I, I believe this is previ he was previously named Miracle, which actually got uh -huh. us in trouble one day from Coach Heen. Or got me in trouble from Coach Heen one day for apparently mispronouncing his name. So I was very happy to see <laughs> he changed his name to Mizu. I was very, very excited when that happened. Thank you for that, sir. We, we, we yeah. casters appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, it's like the one letter difference, it's very subtle. To yeah. notice in the broadcast, and sometimes you know we say it's fast enough, it just sounds the same. So now everyone's not going to be confused. We're not going to see too much spam and chat. I do miss that though. The memes around that were always it always kind of got a giggle from me when we we're casting because I I knew chat would be on it <laughs> immediately. Yeah. I mean they're on a lot of stuff like Abed and Abad is another one that they love to switch <laughs> around. So chat does what chat wants, and it tends to be pretty funny. It does, John. Still to this day, I wonder who Tony Stark was back in those uh, back in those that last year. I think it was we had a, a player come in, Tony Stark, in the last. I I don't know who it was. Yeah, excellent player. He's a mystery. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hopefully he's still playing. Yeah, you never know. We might be casting him right now. GXR. You never know. Final pickup now. They they do need that offlane you talked about. We see the Tide Hunter being removed. Anything that kind of jumps out at you, John? Any predictions you'd like to make to look cool if you're correct? Mm, you've got the lion. You could go for a Mars. You could. I don't know if the Timber Saw really fits in against the AA, but you do have that lion Tim combo that is pretty potent as well. I think those are the big options left here. They could go for a Brewmaster. We have seen that be successful, and I know Mizu's played it a couple of times. So they could also go there. Those are the only three cores that I can see that are sort of selfless enough. Keep fighting early on. They go with the LC instead. So they're going for the dual plays. It is fairly active. It is not great team fight though. So they are lacking duels and the wider engagements, but they've got great save with the LC Undying. They've got good heals on the Undying. They've got a Dispel on the Legion Commander to stop the arrow combinations from the Sand King down line. So you do have ways of breaking off team these team fight combinations, at least on one hero. And that could buy enough time for, say, the Luna to come in with the Eclipse or for the Doom to live long enough to cast the Doom before dropping. And that can kind of change how these engagements go. So we'll see if Mizu can get that timing. We have seen some great Legion Commander plays coming out from different teams. We just need to see the same thing come out from Mizu here. Understandable. I, I do like the Legion as well. I, I mean, you, you always want some catch when you're against Ember, Mirana. AAs are very easy here to just get some free jewel damage off. It is a very nice pick here from uh, from GXR, and you already talked about just having to press the attack against the, the Burrow Strike Arrow. Obviously, that's also going to be very, very impactful this game. A lot of heal as well when you think about it. Like, you've got the Soul Rip plus the uh, the press the attack. It might be quite challenging to actually burst down uh, something like the Luna or the Doom uh, with all these heals that are flying out. Team D, though. A lot riding on the line here for this series. I mean... We know Ponlo, he's been wanting to get in those upper echelons for a long time in the pro scene. He's one series away from qualifying through to the, the loop at Pro Series 7. I mean, it's it doesn't get better than that, Jonathan. I mean, I know TI is two, three months away, but this is Pro Series. Let's get serious. This is Pro Series, John. This is the real top tier Dota. Yeah, it really is. It's the highest end of each region that does have the uh, Pro Series on. Team D close out with the Drew Raid King. He has performed pretty well in that hero. It is one way to kind of counteract all these big one and go spells from GXR. So you can't really fully focus on the Raid King. If you duel him down, he's probably going to have a second life. You do have the Mana Drain on the Lion, but Drew can kind of compensate for that with the Ag Shard down the line. And the Raid King can play fairly fast. We tend to see the Radiance Rush, but you can still shove towers in if you see the opportunity. With your skeletal summons go back in the jungle clear out that way you can sort of keep up with the luna the luna is still slightly faster overall because of her glaives so if she does manage to commit for the glaives build iyd should be able to be ahead of drew by a fairly decent amount by the mid game and he needs to leverage that item advantage uh, team d for their part 
I think there's more pressure here on Kriz and KYXY to play fast. The Sand King and Ember Spirit need to buy that space out. They need to hunt down in your dream, prevent the Luna from farming up, sort of replicate what we saw from Obi Neon when he played with the Ember and when he played against the Luna. Just apply that pressure, prevent the map from being farmed up. And in that sense, the Luna, if it doesn't have an item advantage, it does feel fairly flat as a hero without anything big to kind of give it that advantage in a fight. Fair enough. I'm going to ask you the hard question though, Jonathan. You, you haven't given me a direct answer as always. You've kind of just babbled on about the draft. So mm -hmm. what's, what's the better draft in your opinion, Jonathan? Give me the answer. Hmm. It's a tough one. I think a draft wise, I'd lean towards team D. I think their early wow. game's pretty fast. They can play around with your chain stunts and team fight. Uh, you do worry about the Hex and the Finger and the Doom onto the Ember Spirit to stop him from being mobile. But Doom is a fairly long cooldown. And if you're a fast enough Ember, you should be able to have backup around you. Maybe even just jump the line first is the way to get that done here for Team D. And I think in that sense, if Team D plays to this pace that we have seen today, Prepare as the other battle. teams have, if they just play fast, GXR is not going to have enough time to farm up on the Luna and on the Doom to really get their items up, right? Because even the Doom takes time to farm. Blessing he's going to go for Midas first, he's going to save for the Blink, and it takes so long to get that done. It stalls out your timing instead of the Blink Rush. Of course, that does alleviate pressure on using your Dooms up in a big way. You, know, you don't need to rely on that spell for too much, as it is a long cooldown. But you do put yourself on a later time. You push back your power spike a fair bit. So I think that's something Team D's lineup is going to be able to punish. Fair enough. We are going to game one, of course. We we do have the loot bed odds up right now and GXR $1.44 to the $2.59 of Team D. So they are the favorites, of course, for GXR. And I feel like anyone could have pretty much guessed that in this game one. Uh, we'll see, see if the odds are going to be correct. But the last time we saw GXR, they looked very, very solid. It is hard to go against this team. Yeah, they've, they've had surprise wins. They had a really nice run in TI qualifiers that most people didn't expect. And you really can't underestimate them. They have a mix of veteran players, seasoned players in, and they just have a lot to bring to the table with each other. True. You thought about going down to try and snipe the bounty, but we'll have to leave it be. Mid lane, Pollison might go for a, a cheeky D ward. Ponlo's going to meet him there. There's no actual ward. Uh, around that area. It's actually quite far to the left. It's just really making sure the GXR can not get that D-Wood off, but Paulson, he's still around the area. He might try for it. No, he's going to head up top. Does he go for the cliff ward? Yes, he does. Fair enough, Paulson. Nice little cliff ward there. That should not be D-Warded too early on. And while we're here, we may as well talk about the top lane, where we do see In Your Dream and Paulson against Destrus and KYXY. Seems like a, a pretty decent lane for either side. We, we've seen the Burrow strike into the arrow quite a few times as well, and that was quite quite strong. I, I believe it was Raging Potato it may have been where we, where we saw it. I, I can't exactly remember. But on the other side with GXR with the Luna Undying, that is also quite potent. Yeah, it's, it's got a lot of potential. If you start to build up those Decay stacks, the Lucent Beam down the line, sure, it starts at 75 damage, but if you do manage to focus in on it, maybe go for a 202 build, with enough strength taken away, you could chip away for a quarter HP every time. So there's a lot of potential there. It does take significant investment from Paulson and him landing basically every single decay in a big way. You have to think about the other side as well. Not just the Burrow Strike arrow, but just this level one caustic makes it annoying for In Your Dream to sit there and farm. Because if he gets popped by the caustic while he's trying to hit some creeps, because of his short range, he's going to cop some damage. So he does need to watch his spacing a lot more. He is being disciplined here while still getting his CS and denies off. So it's actually working out quite nicely despite that level 1 caustic on KYXY. Yeah. I mean, while we're here, we may as well say it as well. This does feel like a very in-your-dream meta, doesn't it? Like TB, Luna being the most popular carries right now. It just feels like this patch is almost made for the map. Oh, yeah. It's, it's something that he should be enjoying. We have seen him play all those years, really, every single time. And he does deliver, so... We'll see if he gets that same startup, that same ramp up here on Luna, but he knows his timings, he knows his farming pattern, so he should be able to do what he wants to, unless Team B gets an all about it. Still, 
Bottom lane, Drew, he ends up drawing first blood, or rather Mizu does, onto Drew. It didn't take much either, it looks like it was an earth spike into a hex. Mizu, he just got some right clicks off, and that's something you don't want to see too early if you're Team D. Drew does end up going down. That's a pretty big win for GXR in most Legion Commander lanes, especially without the overwhelming odds, it tends to be a bit of a slower lane. You tend to try to harass out with the overwhelming odds, get some damage off, try to run down, but Mizu still gets that done with the press the attack, and it's down to the fact that the stuns are the chain stun situation here for Team D relies on that debuff, right? They want to get the Raid Fire Blast and the Cold Feet off, and with the LC around, if you don't commit an LC, she's going to save her line. If you commit onto the LC, she's fairly tanky. So you might not find that kill. And it just makes it awkward for this lane for Team D. They kind of want to play aggressive with a Raid King. He's just really nice in lane with the damage output he has. But they can't really do that against the Legion Commander. Certainly so. They might try to go in. Drew, he pops the skeletons, but didn't really have a stun available. So just a bit of a, a casual skeletons being popped there. Drew, but... Just had nothing to follow up with. Meanwhile, though, mid lane, Krish ends up getting his own kill in the mid lane against oh. Alacrity. And that was a solo kill. Immediate tip out from Krish as well. That's what I love to see. When you're in the mid lane, you're 1v1, you kill the other mid laner, you've got to get that mental warfare in. I love the fact that Krish has just tipped him off the bat. Oh, yeah. Krish, he has performed really well from this mid. Uh, in previous games, we've seen from him as well. He's just delivered surprising performances on his Spirit Brothers. And just finding that first kill on the Ember is big. Alacrity, he's playing a much more passive laner into Doom. Like, you just have Devour, you have Scorched Dirt, you can clear out waves, clear out camps. You're not going to look for kill opportunities. You're just going to try to farm into the Midas and giving a faster hero like the Ember this kind of start. And that means we're going to see the Phase Boots faster, the, the Orb of Corrosion a bit faster, that level 6 timing a little bit quicker as well. And once that six is up for Krish, he can start to look around the map. He can start to invade the jungle, take some stacks away from Alacrity if he wants to, and just be a massive nuisance on the map, as we have seen just recently from Yopash. So it's already kind of shaping up for that same sort of performance for Krish. As long as he keeps his momentum up, he can kind of hit those spikes and do a lot for the team. Absolutely. It's for the water rune as well. It should be a one for one of those water runes. Lacrity will just walk his way over. He, he does have that speed aura going as well. A nice little boost there in the movement speed for the Doom. Top lane, KYXY. He may have gone a bit too far forward, but he does borrow strike away. Tombstone committed by Polison, and it, the zombies are chasing. So you can still get some damage out. And he does have another Mango, so he really can just keep going. But Destrus, he's going to be back around. Of course, you won't want to deal with the, the Marana and Sanking if you are the Undying. So they'll let KYXY go. But of course, this is allowing in your dream to do what he does best, and that's hit creeps. Currently top of the CS board at 31 and 6. That's something you never want to see if you're Team D. Yeah, in your dream off to this really good start does mean that he's going to have really good farm coming true. Sure, the stacks aren't quite built up in that jungle. There is only like one medium camp kind of stack up for now, but he's already got the early Morbid Mass to switch oh, out into no. jungle farm early, although... Yeah, mid lane. Arrow was taken by the creep. Alacrity getting very lucky there. Had that arrow connected, they probably would have been able to finish off the kill. Uh, very, very good kind of luck coming in. For GXR in that mid lane is... Well, you don't want your Doom dying a second time. Squish, he has a couple more tips to go as well. So, you know, you, you don't want to get them out too early. <laughs> oh, yeah. Top lane. Ready that. Oh, okay, well, XY, the neutral creep's even helping out right now for GXR. But in the end, in your dream, he's a man of business. He'll go back for that large camp. He doesn't want to give it back the way of KYXY with that sandstorm. Let's take most of the large creeps away from the sand king. It's a good set of farms still coming out for IYD. The 1v1 lane's much more manageable for him. And he is really getting much more than Drew. Like, you compare the core-to-core -core matchup, Drew just can't farm at the same pace even with the Skeletons. He can maybe do that in the jungle when the Skeletons start to be a bit tankier, but it's never going to be as quick, so you do worry about all the space in your dream is getting out here. Paulison being chased down, Burrow Strike, it's only level 1, so it's not really a big range, and... I mean, Joe Cam was around just in case they needed it. Back now, KYXY is the one being chased down. Can they land the Earth Spike? Not quite. Cam not, just not close enough. 
Meanwhile, however, bottom lane is being forced in, but Mizu, he's gonna have some help coming in, and now they might be able to Ooh. chase down this Wraith King. Doom committed immediately, but Drew is out of there. Instead, they'll have to settle for Ponlo. Ponlo shouldn't be able to survive, but Krish is coming in. He's got the double chains out. Ponlo somehow still alive as the cold feet. It will be purged off as even Drew dies. The Doom, it proved to be enough damage. Krish, he'll get Mizu, but that is quite a disastrous set of events there for, for Team D. Drew, he was sticking around. I think he wanted someone to deny him off, but he was within XP range when he died as well. So they got everything out of him. Yeah, that's that's not a good look for Team D. Great rotation out from GXR though. They make use of that first Doom, and we did mention it, but it feels like the Doom does have to take that more active role. Pop the Doom, go back to farming, but come back out when Doom is ready. Just keep that activity up for the team, and it does pay off for Alacrity. He had that slower lane. It is kind of fixed by just getting that good side lane rotation. The gap between in your dream and drew is going to grow, grow wider like while that pressure happens bot in your dreams just in the jungle and there's no one hunting him there's no one stopping him they have wards to watch the farming patterns of the luna but not the heroes to hunt him down yet there is a smoke out now from team d though yeah joe cam he's just stacking up the jungle right now so the timing's gonna be quite nice from team d as krish is gonna be able to get a nice chains off but Ooh. a big earth spike joe cam they'll chase him down they'll get the arrow on the backside. Destrus does take the kill but now GXR, they're making their way back over into that triangle. They don't want to give these stacks away to the Ember. Krish, he's going to take a fair bit of that and just try to back off. Meanwhile, towards the south, Mizu is going to try and wrap around. He does have the jewel up, but Krish, he already has a remnant out. And he just, he does just kind of bait them the other way. In the end, I, I think it's still a nice little play there from Team D. They don't lose anything and they get a few creeps off in your dream. Should be happy Dyer's with that. Top tower is under yeah. Um, they're just making it awkward for GXR to clear out their triangle. Fortunately, they can still clear out the ancients and in your dream. How how do you even get this? Possessed mask along with an early mask of madness? This guy's just not gonna have any issues clearing out any of these stacks. And that farm's still building up. If you look at the CS 83 to 6, compared to the next year at 58 to 1, that's a ton of farm coming true from in your dream and he still has not been punished he's keeping up pace with alacrity's farm on the doom and his devour so you do have really good farm split coming out here for gxr arrow that's gonna be off the mark just just a defensive arrow there just in case kyxy was gonna be pursued so kyxy is gonna go back to that top tower to, to try and secure the tier one as joe cam is still sticking around misses the earth spike but we'll go for the hex and now you've got alacrity with the doom out but no the chains are gonna lock them down so they won't be able to continue the chase and well team d now they are set up as a team if they want to try and secure that top tier two uh, tier one tower joe cam he's still going to be around but in the end i think he might just have to let this one go yeah it's fairly low the next shove out should take care of it from the side of team d gxr are sort of clumped around bot did you have in your dream around he does have the Almost max blessing, and Mizu is just waiting on a dual opportunity. Ponlo's very soft. Uh, he definitely is. He'll try for the TP out. Mizu's got the jewel, though. Maybe you don't win the jewel, or maybe you do. It is an AA. Uh, Drew, I'm not sure about this, sir. He does have some help coming in, but he's going to lose his first life. They might be able to even find a second. That tombstone's still going. He'll finally take it down. In your dreams, actually tied. And now Mizu's gone as well. Parlison, he will try to TP. But it's Christian. Uh, Chris is just doing a great job on this Ember. 4 0 and 2 already. A and although the rest of the team was TPing in, it almost felt like they didn't need it once this Ember was there. Yeah, he just does the work, and it's that power spike. Phase boots up, Orb of Corrosion up. He has great damage flying through. He's going for the Maelstrom as well, so a very similar build to what we saw last time from Gen Yopaj in the last series. And he's just having that same performance. 4 0 on the ember taking all the activity on the map gxr are using the space really well though they've got a one 2k lead despite that and alacrity does have doom back up so they are going to go hunting a bit here but the moonlight might break that off krish is with the rest of the team ops down they want to try and make a play here joe cam smoke 
Had a break. Krish gonna get in range. Gets a nice chains off into the arrow. That should be another. That was a blind chains out with the slide of fist. He just had a guess. Not your best effort. Oh, man. Yeah, Krish is Krish is just on point. And we we kind of remember last time we kind of questioned the storm if he could play on that level. He's delivering the same performance in the Ember. He's just really doing such a fantastic job in this mid. Really great surprise. Again, we, he's a name we've seen before, but I don't recall this level of performance from him the last time we saw him. So all those years apart, he's definitely improved as a player, and I think it's catching a lot of people off guard. GXR, and they have to get these rotations at some point. They popped a smoke, they didn't find anything, and they need to still play around the Doom that's available here, the duel that's up, the finger that's ready, and just keep buying space for Luna, and keep trying to get kills to slow down Team D, because they're within 2k gold. You are still 2k above, which is still nice, but it just doesn't feel like it's wide enough. Like, if it maintains for 2k for the next five minutes, you have a slight issue. You want that to keep growing wider with your Luna, with your Doom, and they might have to, again, commit to a few hunts here to get that done. Mizu. No blink up yet on the LC. He's got to be very careful about his positioning. His GXR was there all in on of course in your dream and maybe even the mid doom by alacrity who is farming very well right now mind you i'm in a great old time on this doom there is a smoke up team d they want to keep the aggression up but paulson's going to be there to break the smoke and now the tombstone's already down as the burn strike does come in but the press of the attack is going to make it so he can walk back and reinitiate now as kyxy doesn't have a way out of this team fight jewel is going to be there and they are going to win another jewel onto mizu and it seems like they just read the movement there. GXR, they knew a smoke was coming. And they punished the side of Team D for it. Yeah, and that's, that's the kind of kill they need. They find a core, they make use of at least one of their spells. They still have Finger and Doom ready. They do shove in a bit on mid. But Moonlight is enough to kind of force them back. They don't fully commit without seeing the other heroes of Team D. They know that defense should come out. So they play it safe. While all of that happens, In Your Dream just keeps farming up, does have the Yasha into the SNY, and then into the BKB. And once you have that SNY BKB, you do feel a lot safer on this hero. It's going to be harder to burst down. You have nothing to eat through that spell immunity here from Team D besides maybe stopping the lifesteal with the Ice Blast, but that's it. You won't have the control, and if In Your Dream manages to hit that point, just stand in the middle, pop the Eclipse, get some damage off, it can be pretty pain painful for Team D to deal with. T1 mid tower. Get started with the Sandstorm, and this is a very valuable tower to get. I mean, against the Luna who just wants to farm the jungle, you always want to try and secure this ASAP. GXR, though, obviously not going to be willing to, to let this go down for free. Going to try and fight back. It's not going to be an easy fight for Team D. You've got a lot of things to worry about. They are going to back. They're going to play it a bit more cautiously. You don't want to overextend too much here. And mind you, this whole time, Drew has also been farming, and he is trying to go for the Radiance Rush on this Raid King. He is still far behind in your dream. So instead, they do at least find Polison, and this should amount to a kill on this Undying. The Cold Feet is going to lock him in, and Krish, he'll take his sixth kill of the game. I mean, just giving the Ember the kills does accelerate his spikes. He's got the Maelstrom coming in now. So even more damage on the Ember with the Lightning procs down the line. Uh, going back to your point with Drew, honestly, with his gap right now with the Luna, it's only about 800 gold. Not too bad. Like, you expect the Luna to have more to play with, to be quicker in the jungle, to have at least, I'd say, one to 2,000 gold ahead of the Raid King at this point, with all that efficiency you have on hand, it's not quite that big. So if you are Druid, this is a, it's, it's still very playable for the Raid King. Like the Radiant's flying in now, this is a major power spike for Drew. He can join his team and shove out, and looks like he's just gonna commit. And he will, Skeleton's up, Siege Creep there. He's got the reincarnation, so it's not really easy to, to just burst through down. You've got Mizu waiting with the blink dagger though, and he wants the Ember. Krish is going to be very careful, but Mizu, he will go after the Wraith King instead, trying to get that first life down with the Ice Blast. 
is going to fly in, but they got the first life as KYXY. He's in with the Burrow Strike epicenter. They do get Mizu and Joe Camp down immediately. Is now Polison. He's low on Krish. A great double chain down again. They're going to find the Undying. Alacrity, he's not safe either. They get the Burrow Strike. Prepare for a lesson, he says, as Alacrity. He's just trapped up. Another kill for this Ember. 8 0 and 4 as they chase for another. In your dream, he's going to try and run a KYXY. He's in with the Burrow. The arrow's not going to land, but they have the Wraith Fire, but they can't fight. Not underneath this tier 2 tower. They've got a back. In your dream, he'll force them out. But it's 12 to 5, still net worth lead, going the way of GXR. So they are theoretically still winning the game. But it is starting to feel like the momentum is starting to swing the way of Team D. There's finding the angles in these fights, and you saw how awkward it was for GXR. They get the first life in the Raid King, Alacrity's forced to doom the Raid King instead of the Ember, and it's just not the target you want. Even if you doom him up, he's got a lot of HP, he's got the Radiance Burn for the mischance, very hard to just hammer in on him with physical damage, and they just didn't find that kill. So GXR has to be a little cautious in taking those engagements. They are going forward here. That they are. They have found another. And it's going to be Polison who does get arrowed up. But they don't want to fight into that high ground or the tombstone. Krish. Prepare for a Almost, but not quite. Yep. Nice cautious play from Team D. GXR was clumped around the area. Um, GXR still holding on to the 3k lead is nice. I, I don't know how the farm distribution is really feeling with that. You're at, at about 10k on T and IYD. And the big gap is really down to Krish and KYXY being lower. But otherwise, I think the farm distribution is all right for Team, Team D to play with. Like this 1000 lead from T and IYD isn't massive. It's not a major item that gives him a huge power spike over anyone else first. They need a little bit more for that network to really mean something, and they're going to need time to get that done. Uh, the fact that Drew's keeping up is already enough to give this Raid King some presence here. And even Krish, like, he's a bit lower, but that's because he's been active, and there's a smoke again from Team D. In your dream, he's the target, but he's going to back off at the right time. Still Krish, he's on the chase. Remnant out chains? No, it's not going to be there. He'll slide the south instead of going for the east, and... That all our GXR to run out, but Ponlo, he's on the chase as well. He's gonna find them as the Burrow Strike does come Ooh. in, and now the Ice Blast, it does connect. They'll kill off Polison into the line. They've got Joe Cam, but now Mizu, he does kill off KYXY. Back in onto Destrus. The Murana gonna make his way back. But can he? Alacrity? No, they're gonna find him in your dream. He'll take the double kill on the Luna. It's gonna end up being a two for two trade, I believe. There was a buyback forced from Polison. But I think GXR, they needed that kind of team fight to go their way. Yeah, it, it does pay off. They did kill off a core and a support in exchange for their two supports. They managed to get the finger flying from their line before he died as well. And newest kills have lined up for Lakati to finish up his blink with his BKD. So this is the item advantage we were looking for on GXR. That's enough to have more presence in these fights. They still have the Doom. They still have... Ways of engaging at the moment. They don't have Eclipse and Finger, but Doom Duel should be enough to net you a pickoff if you start hunting here on the side of GXR and Team D. I mean, they still have their own big team fight spells. They've bought the Epicenter ready. They have the Reincarnate back up and Drew. They might just want to wait for Chris to finish the Axe at this point. I think once you have that up, you feel a lot better on the Emerald. Oh, Hex though. out. KYXY mid lane. Do they want to go the high ground, though? Not quite, as the Ice Blast comes in, press the attack, gonna save Joe Cam's life. But Burrow Strike is there, KYXY. We'll set up for another as Paulson now, he's dropped the Tombstone, he's popped the ulti, and they're gonna try and get a big, big pickup onto Drew. He needs some help, he does have that first life though. That'll be in the reincarnation. But they've got the Doom up for Drew if they need it. It looks like they'll save it for Krish, and they will. Zalakri, he won't get it off in time. Drew's going to back off. KYXY, Epicenter. He's pump faking, but he's not throwing it out. In your dream, the BKB's about to wear off, but he's out of range. Instead, they are going to go after the Doom. Alacrity, he's been caught. And Krish played that really well, and he gives him another tip over. <laughs> He, he played it really well, though. He avoided the Doom with the Slide of Fist and backed off with the Remnant. And then came back in to get Alacrity. And now they're going to try for a Roshan play. 
Oh, they can go for it. There's, Eclipse is going to be back up, but without Doom, without the Finger Nuke for a little bit longer, it's a bit of an awkward fight for GXR. The Doom's the big one. Not having that option to lock in means they can't really come in for this fight, and that's going to be a nice Aegis coming out for Team D. Probably just going to give it to Krish, and it does look like he has freed up the item slot, so two lives for the Ember, two lives on the Raid King. It's hard to play against that. They just... The thing with GXR is they have big spells that you can only throw once, right? On the Doom, on the Lion, on the LC, just once in a team fight. And on Drew alone, they have to think twice, okay, are we going to commit Duel? Are we going to commit Finger? Are we going to commit Doom on Second Life as well? And they need to hammer in that choice. If they just immediately Doom Drew in that last fight, they might have at least found a Raid King, maybe given away the Ember, but they never really caught the Ember out anyway. So those kind of small choices are what GXR need to think of as a team and execute on. Like if they don't just go all in, they don't find anything big. Well, tier 2 top tower going to be under siege. GXR, it doesn't seem like they're quite willing uh, to go and defend. Instead, they're going to maybe try and trade, but I think Team D will have plenty of time to, to come back and defend and force a fight. Their, their skills and spells are just so low cooldown. They just seem to always have them up. So GXR also have all their spells up as well. So you've got to be very wary of that if you are Team D, as the Ice Blast is already coming down from Ponlo. They are setting up for the fight already, Team D. Ice Blast. It's going to head all the way down. KYXY going to go for a burrow. They got the follow-up arrow as well, and that's going to be Joe Cam. No, they had to press the attack, but he does finally drop. But this time around, they've got Krish on the Ember. That's the target they want down. He does get glimmered, though. He'll turn around. He had the Aegis anyway. That'll be the first life. Is in your dream now. With the Eclipse going to go in, he does get Pon low. KYXY so darn low in your dream, he can't get him. Instead, they'll turn back in onto Mizu. Arrow even landing on oh. Polison in the backside. They can kill both of them as the chains does lock them both in. Still a good team fight for Team D as they want another. Drew trying to chase down Alacrity but won't be able to get the vision. In the end, it was a 3 for 3 trade. I mean, you didn't really kill the Ember though. You just got the Aegis. So in the end, 2 for 3, it still does favor Team D quite nicely. Yeah, the best thing about this was that they still have Epicenter, they still have Reincarnate on the Raid King. And they okay, can just look to re-engage. They know Doom is down, they know Eclipse is down. Those are the big spells that GXR rely on to get these wins. Uh, the, the downtime of GXR's fight potential is just way too long, and that's something Team D has been abusing quite nicely. Now they have a defensive item on KYXY. They've got the Lincolns, they can just pass it to the Ember, they can pass it to Drew, block off the Hex and Finger. Well, oh, Drew. Yeah, they're gonna go straight in onto Drew, but he's taking no damage right now. They're just trying to hold him down. Still, he is alive. Finger there as well. He's still not dying. He'll turn around now. He still has reincarnation up. They've taken down Mizu. Instead, though, they want Krish. That's the big target. Take down the Ember, but no, he's gonna be alright. Back in on Drew. He's chasing down in your dream, but now the tombstone's been dropped. They can't fight here. Team D, they might have to back, or maybe not. They'll keep going, but Destrous, he's off the mark with the arrow. Back in on Polison. They'll have to settle. In fact, no, Chris, he will oh, not settle. Chris. He wants Alacrity on the Doom. He's down again. Very nice, Drew says, as they win another engagement, and now Mizu's getting tipped. Oh, goodness me. Ice Blast? Oh, man. oh wait a minute. Nice blast. I don't think he's low enough. No, he's not. He's going to be all right. It is annoying. He can't leave this uh, fountain until that fades away. So he's going to have to spend more time regening up. And that's more time to get this push going on Team D. And it just goes back to the two lives. Like You hold down the Raid King. You take the first life. You don't have Doom. You, you don't have your big spells. Eclipse is just off cooldown along with that Doom. So now you can fight for the high ground, but... That was not a fight you take. You just need to wait for those spells. GXR needs more patience here. If they go for pickoffs, it can't be the big chorus like the Raid King. Maybe the Sand King could be an option, as he is slightly easier to pin down without the reincarnation. But even then, I think you're better off catching a support if you don't find any. Just farm. You've got Luna, you've got Doom. Just leverage that efficiency you have on the map and just kind of take it from there. Ice Blast not in your dream. Arrow, no, to press the attack. Mizu is going to save the day. And in your dream, he didn't even flinch. He had the BKB, doesn't need it. He knows that Mizu's going to have his back. <laughs> yeah, you got to love that LC Ag Shard. 
They do manage to get the rotation out, uh, trying to jump Drew, but there was a scan. So he does manage to bail out in time, and they even got the Moonlight Shadow to protect. So that smoke rotation from GXR, not quite going to pay off, as it should give Team D a chance to regroup here. Hollison, good in position here to, to try and break any smokes, but you see how fast he melts. Oh, poor Undying. It, I always find it so ironic that he's called Undying, John. Even though he seems to be one of those heroes that just never stops dying. Just always, always dying. Yeah. Terrible hero. Yeah, uh, I haven't played an Undying in, I think, a year now. Uh, I have. I mean, I still love the hero. I played You him. have played him? Uh, How unfortunately. Is it is it this? Is it like this? Can you relate to Paulson? Yeah, I mean, look, if Paulson can't can't survive, then what, what, what chance did I have? John? <laughs> it's fair enough. Fair enough. Tier two mid falls. That's a last outer tower for GXR. They've only taken one tier one. The team beat are two K ahead now. The Doom, the Luna, they don't have that farm advantage. It's Drew up top of net worth as they just take control of the jungle here. Team D clearing out all the camps, not leaving. Too much safe space for GXR to get their own farm up. They could just wait for the next rush if they want. That will give them the Ag Shard and Cheese as well. But no, they do smoke up here on Team D's end. Krish, KYXY, and Pondo are going to look for something. They are. Remnants oh. forward. Krish, he's really rushing, but Ooh. Slider Fist going to be in the wrong area. It is nighttime, so he has no vision right now. But GXR, they seem to know he's around somewhere. He's in the tree line, but he's going to be careful. They've got the Hex, they've got the Jewel, they've got everything. Meanwhile, on the other side, KYXY is oh. waiting, and now they got the Jewel out. They got Krish, they've got the Ember. But Burrow Strike might have been in time. He might be able to get out, and he is not. Oh... Very, very close, but not quite. Oh and now KYXY God. may drop as well, but he's going to try and back as the Eclipse does come through. Double kill there for In Your Dream. Alacrity will even pick off Ponlo. Very close call there, but a three for nothing trade. And this is something you never want to give over to GXR because they, they know how to use this, this kind of time to get the absolute most. Oh, yeah. And you're inching towards this power spike for Inner Dream. He's almost got the Daedalus up. So his damage output starts to rely less on having Eclipse up, more on just hitting like a truck. There's a DD here as well that neither team spotted, but Paulson does find now. So they can just have IYD run down to it. Wait for the next rush. If it's a short respawn, they might have a good time in in that pit, but uh, likely likely not. They do have the they do have it bottled up, so they can save that tool for later on. Team D just getting a bit too hasty. Krish, he doesn't have his own protective items. He is relying on the Lincolns from KYXY, so maybe he needs something to protect. He's saving for his own Lincolns now. That's when he can play even more hammy. Uh, for now, he will need to wait a bit more to play that wild. As GXR, the lead is just down to 1k here for Team D. So they can just, they can start to reinvade their jungle. There are still wards watching them on that cliff that they haven't taken care of. So D Team D are fully aware of the positioning right now of GXR. And that Roshan is a fast one as well, 40 seconds away. Hollison, another great position here from our Undying to make sure he catches out any kind of rotation. For the naked eye, it might look like Paulson's feeding, but that is a very important place to be for the Undying to, to make sure nobody else on his team gets caught out. Yeah, he's done that a total of eight times now as well. So no, eight no times need to he's point given out, out John. information. They don't, they don't need the number, John, all right? He's, you know, he's doing his job. That's all we need yeah, to say. He, he is. I mean, they, they pulled back in time because the Undying dies. Unfortunately, that means their access to Roche is cut off. They don't have the outpost in control. The ward is still standing there for Team D. Roshan's going to be up in a second. And ideally for GXR, you want to you just go in with your double damage Luna with the Daedalus. Like that Roshan's not going to stand for long in front of In Your Dream. They just need to find a way to sneak in. Otherwise, Team D might set their eyes for it. Give a second life out towards Krish. Get the Ag Shard going on, I don't know, at this point. Maybe there's Sand King. And just go from there. In lane. Never refuse gold given. GXR, they're going to go for a big smoke as well. We've got a smoke on smoke scenario here. I say that. Team D, they are no longer smoked. GXR, DD rune on in your dream. 
got that Daedalus up. It's a lot of damage. With that shards out, you could just kind of burst down the supports on the backside. They'll go after the tier 1 mid. They're going to dare Team D to try and defend this. Glyph popped. They'll retreat for a little bit, but ultimately will look to come back in. The other side, Drew, he's got his BKB up. He's on the Courier, coming out now. And Roshan's also available. This is some unfortunate timing for GXR. They don't get the mid-tier 1. They're not around Roshan either. They just lost the DD rune as well on In Your Dream, and they've got to deal with this bot wave. So this Roshan's going the way of Team D for free. They've got no vision to scout this out either. Yeah, and they just haven't been able to ward up in that area. They draw the line now. They pop another smoke to run in. If they can get that good Doom off in this fight, that's a turn it, but it's too slow. Yeah. get the Ag Shard, the Cheese, the Aegis as well. The Shard, they're going to pass on to KYXY. So he will have that Epicenter for oh. every 700 units moved. Come on now. Lovely. I mean, think about it. With the Burrow Strike, you get one free Shock Wave out, right? And that slow is fairly annoying. It's a good way to start it out. At least it gives you some more utility with your burst strike, Radiant so it's kind of good in that sense. Just buff Sankey, for the love of God. Mid lane, they're gonna go for a gank, it looks like. Mizu. No, they're not gonna fight anything. I mean, you don't really want to fight into the Aegis anyway. Like, it's a bit challenging. Wraith King has three lives now. Potentially four, depending on how long you take to kill him off the third type. Drew, he's just gonna get right to work. He knows how strong he is right now. With the status resist, the radiance, the BKB, the AC. Krish, he's he's kind of playing mind games right now. Deep remnant into the base. GXR, they're gonna jump in with the Lacry, try to get the first life. Lincoln's will be broken, and they do get the reincarnation. Can they get the Aegis? No, Drew, he's gonna back off, he'll reset. He just needs 30 seconds. Yeah. Doesn't need too much. I mean they do at least buy themselves, what, 40 seconds there to wait for Drew, and he's just going to pop in a different lane, go again. I think for Team D, they need to jump the back line, make use of your Ember, catch one here out. If they get the 4 versus 5 advantage, simplifies the high ground push. GXR are kind of working this defense well. They're threatening enough that Drew can't just go all in and Team D can't bounce back into these fights yet. We'll see if they can kill him again. Alacrity goes in. Groundhog Day, Drew... He's going to life steal a bit, and he's out. Bit of a reset as Krish does the exact same thing. Remnant deep in the base. Not going to use it. Just backs off. Drew. Looks like he'll give up the high ground for now. At GXR, they're yeah. going to make it very difficult, and I think it's fair enough for them to, to go back and just farm the map. Yeah, uh, they still have control in the majority of the map. I think what Krish is doing is really great. Like, the... Fire Remnants with his Ag Shard, that burn damage is stopping the blinks. So it right. makes it really awkward for GXR to jump in. They just have to run up every time after the Earth Spike to really try and find that kill on the on the Raid King. And when they don't find it, he just retreats, rewind, do it again, slowly shove. I mean, the Tier Tree is eventually going to die this way anyway. You've got an Eye of Scotty now coming up in your dream, but Burrow Strike Epicenter. No, it wasn't an Epi, it was that Pulse. Drew. Glimmer Cape, he might be alive. No, he does lose the reincarnation. They'll get the first life again, but he's going to reset. And in 35 <laughs> seconds, he'll have three lives again. <laughs> There's just no risk right now for Team D to just run up the high ground, chip chip that tower away, do some damage. And reset. Like there, there's literally nothing stopping them. While that happens, Chris just keeps farming, and he's still saving up for the Lincolns. Not too far off, like 200 gold away for the Lincolns on the Ember, and then that's when you can pretty much jump in. You can just double up on the Lincolns past the KYXY Lincolns onto the Ember, so he blocks everything, and then just go from there. Like start cleaning up the backline as you expect to do, and look for the high ground objectives afterwards. Drew is just keeping them in base. Like oh, there's yeah. nowhere else GXR can be in. They can't jump out, they can't farm, they can't do anything. And now he's got a two second crit, John. He, he took the tomb for himself, as every carry tends to do for some reason. <laughs> He'll get that level 25, and now the crit's on two seconds. Very good. Here we go. They'll try to burst him down for the first life again, and they'll get him the first time. Can they get him the second time this time? The Earth Spike is there. KYXY, XY, just the Burrow Strike. They try to get him out. Everything committed. He's going to just run away. Or maybe Ooh. not. They do get the Aegis. They got him this time. 
Remnant Sign again from Krish. Making it hard for Mizu to jump in with that blink. Now without the Aegis, it's not quite as safe to do that. So they are actually going to have to back off for real this time. Yeah, I mean, they, they've still spent like nearly three minutes, four minutes, just keeping GXR in base where Team D was still farming up on Raid King, farming up on Krish. The Lincolns is pretty much done here on Krish if he wants to buy it out. And he can just be protected now from the Doom. There are still a lot of single target spells from GXR to break it though, but they could get caught off guard if you are quick enough on this use here. So you're, you're not in a bad spot. GXR, they don't have the gold advantage on Luna and on Doom. You're still in pretty dire straits here. Drew is still number one. He's going for the Abyssal, has the Basher. He feels great. They pop the Moonlight. Maybe looking to catch someone stretching a bit too far out here. Here we go. Smoke up, though. We're going to rush right into them. KYXY, he's in the Sandstorm, and Destrus is going to be in the tree line. Smoke's not going to lead to anything. Not yet, anyway. The Creep Waves are just too forced in. It's very hard to smoke out of your base like this. Drew, they're going to make the jump in. Alacrity is there. Earth Spike, Dust, but they will not commit. It's a very challenging situation for both teams right now. But for Team D, because you've got the whole map to farm, eventually you are just going to take over. Yeah, and they already have. 8k above. The only reason Alakati and your Dream are pretty farmed up is because everyone else is really just not farmed. Mizu has not progressed too much at all on the Legion Commander beyond the Ag Shard. That's really his main contribution at this point. Not even the duel for lockdown. Oh, they oh, they found Pon low. They've got the captain down and the finger is out and they will have the damage. It's a nice start. 4v5 now as Drew has rushed forward. He's going to be a little bit careful here as Alacrity is going to run up. But they miss. That's going to be enough it looks like. But it is going to at least open the map a little bit for GXR now that it's a 4v5. You probably won't want to fight without the Ice Blast. So GXR, they'll get into their triangle and at least get a bit more farm going on their end of things. Time to just get some gold flowing once more. Um, get some tier 4 items as they've been locked out of their jungle for that long. So they're going to have a little bit more power in the next engagement. The side of Team D could just wait for the next Roshan, a minute 10, when we find out when that respawn will come through. And they could just go for it. You know, refresh would be nice on the Ember. Uh, Ag's Blessing would be excellent on Drew, as that just means everyone gets to live a bit longer. Even if Pondo gets caught out, he could still get the Ice Blast, for example. That could be really helpful in these fights. Moonlight is popped. They know they're sticking out to farm. They can hunt here. Oh, poor old, poor old Paulison. Glimmer Cape out. He might be able to get out of this one. It seems like they don't really want the Undying again, which is absolutely fair enough. They're actually going to completely avoid the Undying. As Paulison, he's out. Everyone gets out scot-free. So GXR. Got a bit of farm. They've got Alacrity just farming some jungle camps across the map. Get some more, more of those tier 4 items up for his team and get his own farm going. And Team D, they are continuing to struggle to go high ground. It looks like they're pretty set on waiting for that next Roshan unless they find a huge pickoff. But it doesn't seem like they're going to have that opening. Nah. Mm -hmm. GXR just playing super safe. They've just constantly stayed in the high ground. They've been satisfied enough with just getting the lane farm for IYD and for Alacrity from there, and just not giving any opportunities for Team D to close it out. Next, Roshan is a fairly short respawn though, Mike. About 50 seconds for it to be back up, and Team D are in a good position to kind of grab that Rosh, so they're in a good spot to just get another Aegis, get another Cheese, get a Refresh or Ag's Blessing, and just kind of ride from there. Once you have that, uh, that Aegis back up, you can look for the high ground, you can do that all over again, just throwing Drew forward, having him waste one life and walk away and wait and do it again and do it again and eventually take that to your tree. So it's just a game of patience here from both sides. That it is. A cold wind blows. It's been a very uh, quiet game. Fontenot with a, a bit of a voice line there. Roshan, one second away now. Mid lane, KYXY. They, they tried, but he just borrow strikes away on the Sand King. And now Roshan is officially back up as the Ice Blast is going to fly through the triangle. 
Let's see how the bot wave there just deals with it immediately as mid lane. KYXY, he blinked in. Where's he going though? He had the Aeon Disc as top lane. Drew, he does finally get the T1 tower. And now they're going to try and rush in and see if they can get the Wraith King. But no, he's fine. <laughs> this will play it up. And now you're just back for the Roche. I mean, there's no, no risk necessary. They just go for the next Roche. It's a refresher shard as well. That means 10 remnants for Krish if he wants it. And I believe that is probably the route they're going to go down. Yeah. It's the best route to go for. It. Just so much damage output on the Ember that can come out with that. The scan, it might catch out Ponlo. Yeah, I mean, but this is nice positioning, right? Like, he needs to be able to break the smoke and make sure they can't contest. Problem is, Roshan's not being taken fast enough. So GXR now, they're in a position to steal this Roshan, and that could be a real disaster for Team D, because they can't allow this to happen. I mean, they're winning the game right now, but if this Roshan goes down with a refresher shard on it, it's going to be problematic because they do go in now. All five remnants, but it catches nobody. They got no damage out. Polison's gone. He's going to buy back, though, as GXR. They're not backing yet. They still want this Roshan fight. They'll move back in. They might be able to get the first life from Drew, and they do. That'll be game life number one. Now, GXR, they might be able to try and force a Rosh. They know the reincarnation's not up. They can take the Roshan fast. Krish, he could try to steal. He might have to try, though. They'll go in, but no, in your dream. He has picked up the Aegis. They'll try to at least blow up Alacrity, and they do get him. Remnants forward. They want more. Krish, Polison, not going to get chained up. And a spike from Joe Cam. Going to allow him to get out. A GXR. Krish, he's still going. He's still going to try. But nobody's around to catch out. And suddenly GXR, it, it looks great for them again. Like they've got the Aegis, they've got the Refresher Shard, they've got double Tombstone oh. right now. Paulson wants to throw it down. He'll get one down as Drew is moving in to take down Joe Cam on the line and does get him with the buyback. Is there immediately as they work on that Tombstone. Back in on the top racks, they're tired of waiting. Satanic now up on In Your Dream. He has popped it immediately though. Maybe a bit of a misclick there from In Your Dream. But he'll have a backup in 15 seconds anyway. Hex out, Drew. He has the reincarnation. Burrow Strike is there, but KYXY, he misses the burrow into In Your Dream, but he has the BKB up. Drew, he's trying to fight. He may lose his first life again as Alacrity has brought back. They'll get a burrow in. Ice Blast there on the Doom. They'd love the die back. They won't get it yet, though. The BKB is going to save the day. Is now Drew. He needs to back off or maybe reinitiate. They've got Mizu on the Legion Commander. Is down and now Krishu. He's got two chained up, and he will take down Alacrity with the die back. Paulson's down as well. Well, they're on to in your dream. Two down. No buybacks available on those two. Mizu commits his own buyback as well. The team D. Will they keep going? There's a DD rune that Chris he's gonna scout it out. You yeah, wanna give yeah, that I over to Drew if you can. They, they should just go. Like there's no reason not to. You commit the buyback on Krish, you commit the buyback on Ponlo. This is your opportunity to at least get one more set of racks and kind of kill off that Luna back to back. Like no Doom to save, no no heal coming out from the Undying, no Tombstone to worry about. This is their best shot at taking that tool away from him. Oh, you've got the Swift Blink up as well. Burrow Strike is there, KYXY just getting started as again the remnants in the backside to make sure that there's no Blinks coming in here from Krish. Because that'll be the secondary racks down. Swift Blink immediately down to the bot lane. They want to try and secure the third. In your dream, Burn Strike dump. Drew moving in with the DD rune. is doing quite a bit of damage, but in your dream, he's going to pop the Satanic. He did not pop the BKB, however. He'll wait out the Aegis first for that one. But Team D, they got the tier 3 tower and they're going for Megas. It's still a 4v5 scenario and a very hard defense for GXR. They might give it a crack, but Burrow Strike in the backside. Joe Cam, he's down. No buyback available. In your dreams, being caught out. Now Polison's down as well. Mizu trying to get to the fountain. He will not die back himself, but in your dream has been left behind on his own to try and deal with the side of Team D. With this BKB up, he might be able to get back to the fountain, or maybe not. They got the arrow. Press the attack's not enough. He's down. He'll buy back as well, but they're already pretty much mega. 
And it's still five versus three. In fact, Ponlo, he does end up dying to end your dream in the end. Drew gives the tip over. Alacrity's gonna blink in. They'll try to fight one more time. There's your duel out oh. from Mizu, but KYXY's there with the burrow. They've got Mizu again. That's a dieback. In your dream is still trying though. Alacrity trying to back off. There's your eclipse out. Onto KYXY. They might be able to get the sanking, and they do, but not before the burrow strike. Onto Alacrity. Another dieback on the doom. Back in on the lunar. It's just in your dream left. They will have policy up in just a second but Drew he's getting right to work cheese a in your dream still trying but there's another double bar strike from KYXY Paulson's right back to the grave and that has to be it GG is called game one will go the way of team D oh man that, that was a back and forth game coming out from both sides a lot of patience from team D in that slow siege up top just having Drew come in pop his reincarnation pull back Go again, pull back, go again, pull back. Krish, with his early aggression, really set up the success story for Team D. His Ember was just so active early on. That solo kill on Alacrity, of all people, probably one of the most underrated mids in C. Because, yeah. you know, he doesn't get as many chances to go outside of the region to play. So not as many spotlights on him, but definitely a veteran player that is up there still in skill. Finding that solo kill was big, and it just led to that momentum where he started going onto the side lanes, finding those kills, forcing the pressure out. GXR, they maintained like a 2 to 3k network lead between the 10 to 20 minute mark for a long time. But that was just not enough. They were only 1k above the Raid King for a lot of that. Not big enough to have the item advantage they needed. And they were finding a couple of kills with the Doom earlier on. The Doom, the Duel, the Finger. At some point, they took it slow, and in a couple of engagements, they'd catch the first life on Drew, and then they didn't know how to commit after. Like, they'd take the reincarnate life, they held back on Doom, they missed some opportunities, and it just those kind of small mistakes, that hesitation from GXR, did give a lot more for Team D to play around with. Fair enough, John. We are going to have to head to a short 10-minute break, but right after that break, we'll be back with Game 2, and we'll see if Team D can get a 2-0, or whether GXR are going to force us to another Game 3 to end the night. See you all again very soon.